Hey, I'm going real high tech here to talk a little bit about the spread of the hands on the bat, which is something that I've mentioned before. And it's been talked about so much in the context of Ty Cobb, but if you just look at the cover of my book here, you can see, hope that shows up okay. That's what I'm saying. I'm, uh, I'm so high tech here, all I can do is show you old pictures from books. But look at the large photo is of Tris Speaker. You can see that his hands are spread just about as far apart as Ty Cobb's are down here in the smaller picture. That's a good three inches or maybe more. And I'm going to show you quickly and move on to some other things. This is really hard to make out, but you can probably find it. I don't know. Maybe you can find it on the internet. This is a photo from the Hall of Fame which gave me the rights to use these, of course, in my book. Uh, yeah, that doesn't really show up very well, but if you were to examine that extremely closely, you could tell that Ty has his hands separated even as he is going after the ball. He's well into his swing now. And I'm going to come back to that in a little bit, but um, I think a lot of people would be kind of surprised about Tris Speaker. Everybody knows about Ty Cobb and the hand spread. In fact, it seems like a lot of people think he invented it or he was the only one to use it. Uh, more advanced technology. Actually, I don't know how old this book is, but it's got some great old photographs in it, which you can usually find in very old books. They didn't have to worry about getting into a copyright lawsuit in those days, so they included a lot of good stuff. That's cool Papa Bell down there uh, of the Negro Leagues. He has his hand spread every bit as much as Beaker and Cobb did in those photos. And uh, he's a, he was, a, of course, a speedy guy, hit the ball and run. But um, a lot of the hitters in the Negro Leagues would actually use some of the techniques of the ball players of the dead ball era. That was one of the reasons that they encountered a certain amount of friction from the hitting coaches of the major leagues when they came up in the 50s. Major leaguers had moved on to home run hitting and, you know, keep your weight back, uh, uppercut swing, get the ball up way up in the air. Uh, the Negro leaguers were still playing dead ball <laughs> in many respects. Uh, Here's a guy by the name of Michael Michael Joseph Kelly, playing for Boston. What an Irish name. And, of course, this is King Kelly. And even though he's a big home run hitter of that era, which doesn't translate into many home runs today, but he's not only choked up. Of course, this is going to be a very long bat. I don't know how long. Let's say at least 36, maybe 38, 40 inches, but he's also got his hand spread. And I think I've got one more in here of another, oh well, of course, you know, Rabbit Moranville is going to, where is he? There he is. Let me get him on the screen. He's not only choked up and spreading the hands a little bit, and oh my gosh, look at the Look at the size of that handle. That's a little telephone pole. He's, he's just a singles hitter, obviously. One more guy who's a big bopper. For a while, I believe, I'm correct in saying Sam Thompson was the all-time home run leader in baseball. And he's got his hand spread as well. It's that characteristic 1890s uh, pose, although he played, actually for one year, he was a teammate of Ty Cobb's. He had his last year when Cobb had his rookie year. So we know that guys 100 years ago spread their hands on the bat. I bet you didn't know that people have continued doing that a little more subtly this is this is really made me laugh. It's a Dusty Baker's book about hitting and, and just playing baseball generally. He has a photo on page 192 here uh, of Pete Rose, who's supposed to be illustrating choking up when you're really trying to make contact. 
Uh, guess what, Dusty? He's also spreading his hands. Look at that. And then, of all people to... Ted Williams in The Science of Hitting talked briefly about the hand spread. said, well, I know some guys do it, but I don't ever do it. Really? Uh, that's getting a lot of reflection from my spotlight, but uh, I'm sorry about the quality here, but you can probably tell there's a little bit of space showing there. You know who else shows a little bit of space sometimes on the bat? Who's playing today? How about McCutcheon on the Pirates? You did, you know, he's wearing gloves, so you have to look real close, but I think he's got a little spread. Uh, Harrison does the same thing, I've noticed, when he's got two strikes. Jason Kendall, who played on the Pirates a few years back, always had a very visible, regardless of the count, he had a very visible uh, spread in his hands. And with Jason, it didn't, you know, he's just put out a book four or five years ago, I think, about his baseball experience. He tells all about everything. Except when he's talking about hitting, he does not explain why he spread his hands. It's enough to th make you think that they're almost kind of kind of keep the lid on a secret. There was Bill Madlock back in the 70s and 80s, uh, perennial batting champion. He always had that hand spread, as far as I know. Um, the Pirates, is, is there something about the Pittsburgh Pirates that they, you know... Uh, Hannes Wagner would spread his hands frequently, and he learned from Fred Clark. So we, we have, what, 120, 130 years in that organization? And it seems like nobody wants to talk about it very much. I don't know. I don't have any uh, special informant inside the Pittsburgh or organization. It's just kind of strange that so many of them do that. Now here's a fellow that I really admired when I was a kid growing up, Leon Wagner. He was hitting home runs, bouncing around a little there, at about the same rate as uh, Mays and Aaron for three years or so in the early 60s. So, uh, you know, he's a big enough guy, but he's not a big, tall guy. Six one, it says here. He was nevertheless able to jack the ball out I think 37 was the total for that year in 1962. Uh, you can be, as we saw with Sam Thompson, you can be spreading your hands and hit for power. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into this, but uh, and I did in my initial video talk about it a little bit, but I thought it was worth uh, more emphasis. It's It's such a cool technique, too, because... So many of the things that I've discussed, I don't think you should try alone. Uh, if you're going to be trying to kind of hold the bat not far back, not way up, kind of hold it into the buttons and then swing down on the ball, I think you should also come forward on your front foot. It's not going to work if you try to stay back and do that chopping down. I don't think you'll get good results there. But hand spreading, I've just been talking about guys who have all different kinds of swings, so hand spreading is something that if you do it right will work in almost any sort of swing. Uh, you're actually having the hands work in parallel reverse motion, as I called it in an earlier video. The bottom hand is, as it were, pulling down on a lever, and the top hand at the same time is driving down into the ball. You can just sit on a square on a chair here, like my squeaky swivel chair that I'm on right now, and just whip the bat, doing nothing but flicking your wrists, levering and pushing, bottom hand, top hand. You could have somebody toss the ball at you, and you could get a pretty good whack. You'd notice that it would really, really fly off the barrel if you were doing that. That's why guys used to play pepper, I'm convinced. They don't do it anymore, and I don't think they, you know, why would they do it? Because that's not a skill that they're practicing. But, but you can really get that quick entry into the heart of the ball, a little bit of a downward angle if you're keeping your hands spread a little bit. Now, when you sw give a good swing to the ball and follow through, your bottom hand is, your top hand is going to come down on your bottom hand. If you're really accelerating the bat, uh, 
it's going to look like the two hands are together when you finish. That's why I wanted to come back to this um, discussion of Cobb. People have said all kinds of things about why was Cobb doing that and what was he actually doing. There's this theory out there that he never really had his hands apart when he entered into the swing, that it, he was kind of faking out the infielders. They didn't know what he was going to do. Was he going to slide that hand up and slap at the ball and try to beat a grounder into the grass? Or was he going to slide this hand down and, and you know, lean back and go for the, go for the downs like a power hitter? Uh, neither. A nor B, both incorrect. C is the correct answer. He kept his hand spread, and you can find him in some photos with the hands together when he finishes because that's going to happen. Try it yourselves. This is when you put some energy into that stroke. If you're not just being a little rabbit Moranville hitter, if you're putting a charge into it, the two hands are going to come together. Um, I love Charles Learson's book about Cobb, and I'll be forever grateful to him for clearing up all the slanders that have been told about Cobb by that piece of work named Al Stump and promulgated by other, I mean, a baseball video by Ken Burns is uh, a lot of fun and very uh, informative in some ways, but Boy, does Burns do a number on Ty Cobb, and I, I wish everyone who saw that documentary would read Learson's book. However, Learson repeatedly says that Cobb does the thing where he's just trying to fake out the fielders, and then before he actually swings, he does this or he does this. No, no, no. Uh, that photo in my book shows that Cobb has the hand spread as he's about to make contact with the ball. Now, as he carries through, they're going to come together again. But he does not, it, it's not uh, some kind of ruse to mess up the infield and get in the head of the pitcher or something like that. It's a very effective technique for getting energy out of your hands. And Cobb was not the only one who did it, and he was not the one who invented it. And I don't know why I'm reading this all over the place and why I've heard it practically all my life as long as I've been researching this stuff. It's, it just ain't true. So I think anybody, I mean, if you, with the short bats of today, it's hard to, to do that and get much of a reward for it. But if you can maybe use a slightly longer, maybe you can use a 34 instead of a 32, and then you can look into kind of spreading your hands. And actually, maybe you don't want to use the batting gloves, or maybe you want to, you know, be able to, one of the, other things that gravitates against doing this is that the hands don't slide well on bats today. You really have to be able to let your hands slide a bit. But uh, see if you can work it out. It's such a great technique. And it's uh, guys have been doing this as long as baseball has been played. Uh, and it certainly seems as though it's a well kept secret. It's like, they, it's like the professionals don't want to let this become widely known.